All right, guys, today we have more PlayStation news and information to go over and talk about. We have quite a few different topics to go over in this video. So before we dive into them, if you could do me a big favor and hit the like button to help this video out and show your support, I would really appreciate that. And make sure you hit the subscribe button as well if you are new here to the channel. We're starting here, though, with an interesting article I came across from Push Square. And the title reads, PS5 fans ponder what Sony's Soho engine could be. And I think this is pretty interesting because it seems to me that London Studio is getting ready to do something very significant for the PlayStation 5. So it says here, as first spotted by Gamatsu, Sony registered a trademark for a mysterious Soho engine in Europe last year, and it's since followed that up with documentation in Switzerland and New Zealand. But just what is this referring to? It's an interesting turn of events, to say the least. Many of PlayStation's first party developers have their own unnamed internal technology that they use to make games. In the case of Guerrilla Games, the Decima engine is used for Horizon Zero Dawn and has been licensed out to external developers like Kojima Productions, who famously leveraged the software for Death Stranding. The name Soho Engine certainly rekindles memories of Team Soho, which was the former name of first party developer London Studio. This group is perhaps best known for its work on The Getaway. We know that London Studio is working on a brand new next-gen IP for the PlayStation 5, but we have no idea what it will entail yet. Could said title be powered by this so-called Soho engine? The links are tenuous right now, but it's possible. Sony could be planning to license this technology out to other teams, perhaps. So that's the link here that I want everybody to pay attention to, is it seems that Sony London is potentially in the process of developing their own proprietary engine. And the reason why I think this is actually likely is because if you go back to when we covered this new PS5 AAA IP that they're currently in the you know early days of working on, in a job posting, it says, as a first party studio, we set out to produce games which show the exciting potential of the latest PlayStation hardware. So it's important you are up for experimenting and working in uncharted design territory. So when you think about that, it makes sense that they would need their own proprietary engine to kind of start work in this way where they're going to try to completely change their approach to game design and do things very differently and kind of alter the what would be considered the normal way of designing a game. To me, that sounds like it would require a brand new engine. So Ultimately, what I'm getting from this is that whatever Sony London is getting ready to do is very big. I could be wrong about that, but it sounds like they are going all in with a big AAA IP. And you know something's going to be big when it gets its own engine, you know, built from the ground up. And a lot of people are thinking they might be returning to the getaway. Uh, but I don't think that's going to happen because it makes it pretty clear in this job listing that it's a new IP that they're working on. And so, you know, it, it's anybody's guess what it could be. We're going to have to kind of wait to get more details on this. But all signs are pointing to Sony London developing their own proprietary engine for this game. And to me, that's a very good sign. So, yeah, let me know down in the comments below what you think this game is they could be working on. Like what type of game do you think it could be and how big do you think it's going to be? Let me know. But we're going to move on from that and talk once again about the long rumored Metal Gear Solid remake because we have more fuel to add to this flame, this time coming from the voice actor of Solid Snake as well as Big Boss, that being David Hayter. It says here, speaking in an interview with Dan Allen Gaming, David Hayter was asked about a Metal Gear Solid remake or reboot. The voice actor thought that it was just a rumor in the beginning, but then received a message from an industry insider that said it really is happening. The fact that David Hayter talked openly about the possibility of a Metal Gear Solid remake or reboot suggests that he is most likely not involved in the project in any way. Speaking about the possibility of using the recordings of the original, David Hayter dismissed it due to the low quality of the recordings, which featured background noise. They could be using the new recordings featured in the Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes uh, remaster or remake, but David Hayter doesn't think this is likely due to, once again, the quality. So there's a lot of very interesting things to take away from this, okay? First of all, it's true. If David Hayter is saying this so openly, then it means he is not involved currently in any way, shape, or form. Because if he was, he would just say no, or I can't answer that. 
he would not touch it at all because he would most likely get in trouble. But the fact that he openly said that, oh yeah, you know, my contact told me this is real. I think that means he's not involved, which is a little bit concerning if this is true, uh, but we don't know if this is true. So we have been covering this for some time. And to me, it seems very obvious that something is happening. I mean, there's just all this talk surrounding it. It's just a matter of we need it to be announced. We need it to be official and it's not being made official. But there's all this conversation. And to me, D David Hayter, he comes off as a good source. I mean, if anybody's going to be in the loop with something like this, I think it would be David Hayter. Whoever texted him and said, yeah, it's real. Chances are that that person texting him knows for a fact that it's real. So... To me, this all but confirms that there's something going on with a remake of some sort. And again, it seems likely that Blue Point Games would be the team to do it. Uh, some people did express concern that if David Hayter isn't involved, does this mean that they're going to replace him? I think that that would be a huge mistake. If you're going to re-record all of the voice lines, uh, you bring in all of the original voice actors or as many as you can, and you certainly do not replace David Hayter, in my opinion especially if it's a remake or a remaster of some sort. But it seems likely if they are going that route, they're going to just reuse the voice lines, most likely from Twin Snakes. Not everybody loved the voice acting in Twin Snakes. They feel like a lot of it was kind of like, I don't know, it just, it just didn't have as much life to it or wasn't as raw as the original. Um, so I haven't played Twin Snakes personally, so I can't speak to that. Uh, but it seems likely to me that if, David Hayter is saying, look, my contact is telling me that this is real. It's probably real. So we still have to take it with a grain of salt. We need to wait for official confirmation. But more and more signs are pointing to something happening with Metal Gear and a remake or a remaster of the first game. It just makes the most logical sense, right? So let me know down in the comments below if you believe David Hayter or if you think that he could be maybe, uh, you know, he could be wrong. His source could be wrong. Let me know. But I want to briefly let everybody know that Returnal is now available to preload on the PlayStation 5. So if you are somebody who is interested in playing this game on your PlayStation 5, if you already pre-ordered it, or if you're going to pre-order it digitally, you can preload it and it comes in at 56 gigabytes. Now, obviously this is gonna be an incredible game. I think all signs are pointing to that at this point. And for those wondering, I am going to have a dedicated video that I plan to put out talking about Returnal, but I just wanted to let everybody know that this is something that is now available and that's how much space it's going to take up uh, on your hard drive. But moving right along here, we're going to talk about the fact that PlayStation apparently dominated the DICE Awards and the DICE Awards are pretty significant. So it says here there are concerns about PlayStation's first party output in enthusiast circles. But in the real world, Sony continues to dominate award ceremonies. The DICE Awards, which are considered the Oscars of the games industry, granted an incredible eight gongs, that's what the awards are called, to internally developed titles, with timed exclusive Final Fantasy VII Remake also scoring one. Sucker Punch's historical sandbox Ghost of Tsushima took home four awards, while The Last of Us Part II won two awards, and Dreams and Spider-Man Miles Morales both took one award seems like roguelike Hades was the biggest winner of the night, taking home the coveted Game of the Year gong and an overall total of five awards. So just wanted to take a moment to let everybody know in case you were wondering, is Sony still continuing to win awards? Are their games still cleaning house? Yes, they are. It's really nice to see Ghost of Tsushima shining once again. It was my personal Game of the Year for 2020. So to see it actually take home four awards, which is the most of any PlayStation title, uh, that's actually really impressive, and I'm sure that Sucker Punch is feeling really, really good about the positivity and just the overall positive reception that Ghost of Tsushima has garnered since its launch. I know I'm feeling good about it. Can't wait for a sequel. Really glad to see Sucker Punch uh, become elevated into that really high, you know, high-end, prestigious type of studio. I know a lot of people have always already seen them that way, but I think it's safe to say that after her Ghost of Tsushima, they're definitely looked at uh, as, a, as a more high-end studio now than ever before. So to close out this video, we're talking about PlayStation Home, which is something I didn't think we would be talking about. And so it says it's been more than six years since PlayStation Home shut its doors, an online PS3 experience where you could meet other real-life players, 
take part in activities together and just sort of hang out. And so apparently Sony recently renewed the trademark for the PlayStation Home Service, giving them the rights until 2028. So that's certainly a long time. And this has created kind of a conversation. You know, is Sony going to be bringing PlayStation Home back? Well, to be honest, it's anybody's guess. I mean, you know, this could be Sony just wanting to have it for the sake of having it just in case. And right now they may have no plans. But something I have seen a lot of people say is that this is most likely going to be something for PlayStation VR 2, uh, something similar to VR chat, right? And I think that this would actually make a lot of sense if you think about, um, you know, what Sony's planning on doing with PlayStation VR 2. I think having a PlayStation home like service or just a place where you could go kind of hang out in a, in a virtual world, right? With their next VR headset, uh, just kind of like a hub. I think that that would be really cool. Now, whether or not this would be something they bring to like PlayStation 5, I, I think it's possible. I don't see why they wouldn't, but it could be something that ends up being exclusive to just PlayStation VR 2, or it might not be anything, right? Sony might not do anything with it, but I think it would be um interesting if they did actually try to do something with it right i think it would just make a lot of sense especially for their vr headset but for those who are maybe a little bit disappointed at the fact that sony might not do anything with this because i know that there are a lot of people who really liked uh you know <laughs> playstation home apparently dream central is something that kind of exists in dreams right now and you can you can go hang out there. So whether or not the latest round of PlayStation home speculation results in the return of Sony's virtual world, a group of Dreams developers are hoping to revive the idea within Media Molecule's creation engine. Dream Central is an upcoming fan project, is wildly ambitious, pledging a social space for release sometime in 2022. As it stands, creators can't add online multiplayer components to their dreams, but this is something the British developer has promised to add at a later date. Whether it will be possible to create an online social hub remains up for debate, but clearly the developers are already, they already have a framework in place with playable mini games like bowling and an entire plaza to explore. So essentially what we're seeing is a group of Dreams developers recreating PlayStation Home inside of Dreams. The only thing that seems to be really getting in their way is the lack of being able to add um, online multiplayer. So it sounds like that's something Media Molecule will be adding to Dreams at some point. And when they do, this could very well be, you know, the, the return of PlayStation Home. Maybe not in the way we were thinking, but the return nonetheless. So just wanted to let you guys know about that. But that's pretty much going to do it for the video. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. Again, leave it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, hit the bell notification icon, and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.